Hey nerds, what's up? Today's video is my Valentine slash February wrap up. I read a lot, I feel, for me, myself and I, at least I read a lot. And I think that I liked a majority of them, although I already know because I've looked at the stats that my stats are lower rating wise than they were last month. But let's get right on it. <music> So of course I do like to keep track of my stats and everything so I'll put in that voiceover I here. I haven't recorded this because the first time the audio didn't get set up but we are looking at my monthly stats for February. Here's the column that we're really focusing on. So much like January here I read eight books this month and then looking at the page count I read less pages. 2,533 compared to 2,986. But keeping in mind, February has three less days in it. So I'm happy with that. Again, the hours listened, I have no idea where this is coming from. So we're just gonna move right along. My average rating was a 3.93 or a 3.94 if we round up those decimals. And this initially surprised me that it was so low, but now looking at the stats <laughs> more than once, I do understand where this comes from. And then two books acquired, seven library books were taken out. This is so many, oh my god. And then two rereads and four own voices. So this is going up and I'm really happy about that. And then looking at the genres, I had two contemporary, two fantasy, a historical fiction, a horror, a nonfiction, and a sci-fi. And this is really elaborate and all over the place I guess but it doesn't surprise me that much because I was participating in valentines this month so of course I had to um, meet the prompts or I chose to do that of course and that really made me like step out of like my traditional TBR like books I would be looking for right now I tend to go in waves of like oh I'm reading all fantasy or all sci-fi at the moment so this is surprising how spread this is. Okay, then format, five audiobooks and three physical. Now this surprises me because this is like back to what before COVID looked like. I was reading a lot of uh, audiobooks at that time. And this is surprising because I don't have any sort of commute. I'm working from home, so I don't have any like drive time on a daily basis. And especially in February, my friend Bailey is normally in my bubble, but she gave birth to her son on February 11th. So I have not been driving out to her and she lives about an hour away. So that would make sense before February but this month I'm like oh, where did this audiobook come from I have no idea how I got five audiobooks in but I'm happy about it and then moving into the audience for adult to uh, new adult and to YA this is like perfectly placed for me maybe a little bit more spread but I'm happy with that and then the identities we are a little bit more diverse in here with the identities and especially the races but I still want to work on this so I read one male author and one or in seven uh, female authors and yeah I'd like to see this more diverse although I am very happy to be reading mostly women compared to men at least um, and then as far as race goes this also did get better but still I would like to work on this two black authors one Mexican author and five white authors and I just yeah would like to see more diversity in my author range I think a lot of us are all working towards that so I want to continue working on that it, if we look at January though I mean this has really gotten better so I'm in going in the right direction um, and then author status, I read three that I had read before and five new to me authors. And again, this looks pretty standard, four and four last month to three to five this month. That clearly is where I'm headed. Um, I'm curious to see how this will look in March because I am reading all arcs for the most part in March. And so I'm curious to see how this is going to go when I get more books read because clearly I'm recording this. I mean, I'm recording this on the 13th of March. I've only read two books. Like, it's a, it, it's a, it's a fact. <laughs> okay, moving into ratings. I had two five stars, two four stars, three three and a halves, one three, and that's it. So this is really where that average rating comes right in. And I think part of the reason why I was so surprised to see that rating is because originally I thought one of these three and a half stars was a four. Um, when I was like, mis I was misremembering. 
and one two of them are pretty close to four stars they're high three and a half and the other one is a low three and a half it's closer to a three but a three and a half for me is a solid book this is by no means mean that I had a bad reading month so I mean I'm happy with this I would love to see it higher up of course but I don't want to have all five star ratings because I think five stars is just like blowing it out of the water outstanding so I don't I don't think that that's a realistic goal but yeah so those are my stats if you just want to take a really quick look at yearly stats we can do that I'm already 35% into my reading goal of 52 I always set my yearly goal at 52 because there's 52 weeks in a year this hasn't really changed um my star ratings are pretty high three three and a half four and five stars are taking the lead and then just moving on into here i'm really curious to see how this one the ebook versus physical book is going to look when it comes down to after march because again i am reading mostly arcs this month and most of those are from net galley so curious to see how that will change um, mostly fantasy so far this year and then contemporary is leading the second place yeah this is looking good to me um i'm just interested in seeing like how it progresses this is really interesting to me too i'm reading of course a lot of 2020 books and this does include two of the books i've read in march where i'm reading mostly recent releases because they're all arcs but then isn't this interesting 2016 2019 2015 are all in the next lead and so yeah 2019 is still really recent but 2016 and 2015 this is like traditional when i started booktube traditional big ya i wonder if this is coming from my rereads or what's going on here it's just an interesting tidbit so yeah these are my yearly stats of course i will continue showing these off um, as the months progress and let's get back to the video now for the let's talk about the book starting off with my lowest rated book which was a three stars angus thongs and full frontal snogging so i did read this for my new series that i'm starting um, so I read Out of My Comfort Zone with Becca and the Books. So we came up with a TBR together and I read some of her favorite books and Angus Thongs and Full Frontal Snogging was one of those. So this one is one of her childhood favorites and so I decided to read it. I've also read this book before when I was younger, so it was a nice reread for me. However, it definitely did not age very well. There's a lot of just like yikes <laughs> of commentary in it um our main character georgia nicholson has it's like all inner monologue stuff it's basically kind of like diary sort of um and she just has a lot of like fat phobic commentary on like her teachers and she's like very concerned about being a lesbian for some reason it's like terrifying to her um yeah just like some body image stuff which part of it part of all of that stuff was very normal like 14 years old and everything you think in your head yeah it's some of it's gonna be like that even today it doesn't matter even today but yeah it just it didn't age very well and like none of that was addressed of course because it was written in 1999 <laughs> so not um perfect but just it was fine I probably would have rated it a little bit lower if it was like for my enjoyment fully because I also don't really love reading this age range anymore but I gave it a three instead of a two and a half just because that doesn't it's that part is not because of the book it's because of me so then I had two three and a half stars the first of which I'm going to talk about is Binti so Binti was a solid three and a half stars both of these three and a half stars were pretty solid books this is a short story sci-fi about a girl who's leaving earth for the first time and she's from this um, area that's really well known for a lot of like technical advances but they don't ever like leave so a lot of other people have never seen them before they come from an area that doesn't have a lot of water and stuff so they like put clay all over their bodies and stuff and they view it as very beautiful but other people looking at them view it as very weird and like dirty so she leaves for the first time and her family's not very happy about it and while she's traveling I don't even want to give that much away because like this book is only 96 pages and yeah so basically she's traveling to the school that she got accepted into for the like elite of 
technology stuff. So she really wants to study and like blah 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 and she's kind of doing it against her family's wishes because like I said the family and the culture of the area doesn't really ever do any leaving. So that's like where the book starts. There's death and stuff and like um recognizing the misunderstanding between species and stuff. It was good. It just I it was good. It was a solid book. I just never really like books that are this short. And again, that's not the book's fault. That's like a my style thing, but I never feel like it's fleshed out enough. So like for everything that did happen, it's like I wish I could have seen some of the relationships before, you know? So like yeah. And next up, the other three and a half I have is Fortuna Swarm by KJ Sutton. This book I also read for Out of My Comfort Zone with Becca, and it's a fantasy romance about a girl named Fortuna Swarm who is called a nightmare. And so she has the ability to, when she touches people, she'll be able to see some of their fears, such as like being afraid of spiders or the dark or something like that. And she's able to use them to her advantage and like either soothe people or make them more scared in the moment in order to like you know get what she needs so the book starts with her brother having gone missing um she knows that he was like abducted in some way and so she's been searching for him and then this fae comes into play <laughs> he comes into play and like basically offers her information and says in order for you to offer information i need you to come to fae the like fairy and so she agrees and that's like really where our story gets started <sighs> this book was good but i didn't like this book is fantasy romance so it centers around the romance and i was not invested in the relationship between i think his name is Colith the fairy and fortuna i just didn't understand like i couldn't get any sort of pulse on even where fortuna was feeling about it like she is so kind of like all over the place as a main character that I'm like how do you even feel I'm so confused so then I'm having a hard time connecting myself because she's having a hard time connecting there's also like this interesting dynamic with her and this like basically made up friend that she has like what I don't know that was weird and then there's also another like tension person that is the person that I felt had the most like sexual chemistry with her but all of the sex scenes I think happened with Colith I think if I'm remembering correctly I also will say like it could have been a detriment for me to listen to this on audiobook but I don't know like I really loved the action scenes like the scene with the leviathan was so good devastating but good and like i don't know i also don't like trial books i talked about this in the vlog with becca as well just because i feel like there's not enough tension or like concern because if our main character is the one going through the trial like clearly you're gonna survive so yeah solid book but I definitely have my own things that I didn't love about it. Oh, I have another three and a half stars. I had three, three and a half stars. Okay, the other three and a half star book that I read this month was Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This was the best books club pick for February. So we do have a video of me and Paula from Phantom and Books talking about this book. So plenty of stuff there. But basically, I didn't feel like... So this book won best horror and I didn't feel like it was that scary. Like the reveals and everything were disturbing because of what the reveals are, but I didn't really ever feel like there was a lot of worry that like anybody was gonna die or get hurt or like, so what's the horror? I don't know. I mean like, I guess I will say that the reveal of like what's going on in the house is horrifying but I don't know it just it didn't feel like it was scary it felt just disturbing once we get information about what's going on plus like I really wanted more of the historical aspect of this because this takes place in the 40s I believe and like she 
uh, our main character, um, what is her name? Noemi talks about how she wants to be an anthropologist and I have an anthropology degree. And so like, I liked that part, but I just didn't feel like there was enough. I don't know. So three and a half stars. It was good. And I would re definitely want to read more by Sylvia Marina Garcia. I just don't think that this was the book for me. Next book was a four star read and it was The Vanishing Half by... Bert Bennett. Why did I have to think about it? This book is a generational story. We follow two twins, Desiree and Stella, who at 16 decide to run away from the very small town that they live in. They are both black but very light-skinned girls and the whole town is very light-skinned and very like focused on that but they still deal with racism all at the same time. The the story is set in the, I believe, 50s at the start of the book when the girls are 16. And so they run away in order to get away from, you know, life and stuff. They go to New Orleans and then they go their separate ways at that point. And then we also follow both of them as adults. We follow their two kids also um, and kind of how things go on. This book does have spousal abuse and um the n-word is explicitly said it's just it's a book about racism and it's also a book about colorism too it's really it was a really interesting read and it definitely made me uncomfortable at times in the way that I definitely think it's trying to do I think that the goal as a white reader reading this book was to kind of sit with my uncomfortability and figure out why I was uncomfortable and a lot of that stems from like the discussion of what it means to be like a good black person and like how I kind of can sometimes partake in those like biases and I think it was really interesting to read and really interesting to bring up those like questions and thought processes and it was really good um the generational aspect, the only thing I do wish, which is why I didn't give it a five stars, is that each part of the book that followed, like, the twins versus the daughters and everything, I felt like they were all very separate, and I wish that they had each been interwoven together instead. I understand the choice of why they did it the way that they did it, um, and I'm not saying that, like, it even would have been better that way, but just my personal taste that it felt really disjointed almost but not in not in a very negative way just in a like not my preference way so that was the other the four star read that i read my other four star read was it ends with us by colleen hoover again an out of my comfort zone book for becca so i've talked about this in the vlog but i loved it it does have trigger warnings for abuse and a lot of things um yeah, so good, but be very careful going into this one. And it definitely made me decide to keep all of my Colleen Hoovers that I had originally taken off my shelves to give away, but that book was really good. Then I also read two five-star reads this month. So the first of which is A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Mass. This is a reread for me and I'm rereading them in preparation for A Court of Silver Flame. I am behind. I need to read A Court of Mist, A uh, Court of Wings and War and I need to buy A Court of Silver Flames altogether. Um, but yeah, this was fun. I listened to it on audiobook. I love Reese. I love Feyre. I love Moor. I love Amran. I love Azriel. I love uh, Cassian. I forgot how terribly, like, this ends. Like, oh my god. <laughs> Everything is terrible at the end. Oh my god. Like, it's not, it's not a perfect book, but it is, it's so in my heart that I couldn't not give it five stars. So that's the end of that chapter and then lastly the five star read that I read I'm actually really happy that this was as good as it was the TBR jar pick for February that I pulled out like from my TBR jar here I pull out a challenge every month was to read a self-help book and so I decided to read Unfuck Yourself by Gary John Bishop and wow, this book was really good. So first of all, I listened to it on audiobook and that made everything better because Gary John Bishop is either Scottish or Irish and I'm sorry if you're Scottish or Irish because I suck and I know there's a difference between your guys' accents but I can't remember off the top of my head which one it is. I think he's Scottish. Anyways, so that was like just an, a little bonus on top but this book talks a lot about like basically how you're undermining yourself 
and how, like, he, like, says there's this part of the book where he's talking about, like, imagine yourself on your deathbed and you've made no changes and you you never did that thing that you wanted to do, whether it be, like, lose weight or get a new job, change jobs, own your own business, whatever it is. He's like, you're sitting there and you realize you never made the change and how do you feel? And it's only because you could have taken this moment to do that change, but you chose not to because you were scared or uncomfortable or whatever it happens to be. <sighs> it was good. It made me feel things and like, <sighs> yeah, it made me really motivated as far as like interpreting goes. And it also made me take some time like envisioning what my life looks like in the next like five to 10 years and kind of refocusing on what those goals are and then now the next point is that I need to actually work towards them rather than just say like oh yeah I'd really like to own a house in five years but not do anything towards like saving money or whatever that happens to look like so I really liked this one if you're struggling with like motivation consistency like anything like that or like you're scared to take the leap to like write a book I know that a lot of us here on you on book two would like to be writers um but like maybe are scared that like well we'll never be good enough to be a real published author so we just won't ever do it um so yeah so I really recommend this one it was great so those are all the books that I read in March I hope you guys enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up if you did I make videos every Saturday and Monday so I'll see you guys with a new one and Please check out all of my links below. Check out the Best Books Club. Please come join March 20th. We're going to be reading Midnight Library and talking about it. It's not going to be recorded or anywhere else. So if you don't come, then you won't get to hear the thoughts. So I hope you'll come March 20th at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. The link, uh, the ID and everything is down below. So yes, see you guys soon. Peace out. Bye.